started streaming, Tom. What's up, everyone? It's the first time I've been live since New Year's Eve. So it's really, I wouldn't say the first time in 2024, but really it's my first live stream in 2024. And I wanted to start out with a fun topic. I always kind of revisit these things that I've done in the past. Uh, but before we do that, and I'll tell you why. Before we do that, a couple announcements. Got the... Uh, um, Beato Bundle, because we're going to be talking about some some music theory and stuff, some basic stuff, though. Uh, note choices and things like that and scales and things um, related to Jimmy Page. I'm going to be at the NAMM show, or I'm going to be in L.A. during the NAMM show. I will go to the NAMM show at least one day, maybe a couple days. Um, and Tom just asked me if I was going to do a meetup or anything. I'm probably not going to do that, but I, if people are there, I'm sure that I will run into you. Um, so, uh, and, uh, go to rickbeato.com. You can get my Beato bundle, 99 bucks. It's got all four of my courses, uh, in there, my ear training, my theory, quick lessons pro in the beginner guitar course. And of course my arpeggio course, uh, 50% off 75 bucks for that, um, is also at rickbeato.com. I'm growing a beard. You guys like the beard? What do you think? Uh, it's weird. I, you know, I see this beard and I'm like, who's that old guy right there? Right? Winter beard. It is a winter beard, Douglas. Yes. Um, okay. So I'll tell you, I'm going to talk about the stairway solo and you're like, Rick, why are you talking about the stairway solo again? I'll tell you why. So we have a little family band here. I mentioned it in one of my videos with me, Dylan, Lennon, and Layla. People are saying the audio is a little bit weird. It's weird. Um, let me check here. I wonder, you know what? It is two mics. What's Aaron telling me here? Hold on. I'm going to fix it. Mike is phasey. I know why, Aaron. Hold on. If I go like this, if I turn off loop back, check one, two, then it's just one, I'm sure. All right. Yeah, that, I'm sure that that's good. Uh, does it sound better now? I'm sure it's better right yeah. now. Fixed. Boom. Yeah, I have the uh, the thing. Much better. So um, so we have a family band: Dylan and me on guitar, Lennon on the bass, and Layla on the drums. So um, we've been doing. We kind of have a, a a group of songs that we play. One of them is "Stairway to Heaven," but it's really "Stairway to Heaven" only from when the drums come in out. It's um, them bones, Alice in Chains. It's uh, it's kind of a weird, kind of a weird group of songs. It's um, uh, Heart Shaped Box, Nirvana. Um, what else? We, I mean, we have a bunch of songs that we play, right? So so we're um, we're but okay. So we we're playing Stairway to Heaven, playing the solo, and it's um, and Layla says. Because the drum part's kind of tricky. And the first time we played it, we hadn't really listened to it. And, and she goes, uh, what should I play for Phil's? I said, well, just for to start, you can play, play the back in black, Phil. Beppo, 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 beppo. Oh. She's like, oh, yeah. And then she starts playing. She's like, oh, that works great, right? So Dylan's playing the solo. And I'm like, all of a sudden it hit me. Now, I've played the solo a million times, um, except for one note in it. I said, why are you playing that note, Dylan? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, why are you playing that F in this phrase? So he starts out and he goes, uh, that's F. And then he goes, I, and I was like, why are you playing the F? Um, I said, isn't it an E there? And he goes, no. And I was like, it's not. He's like, he's like, no, it's definitely F. Play it. So I play it. I was like, oh, yeah. Wait, what? And then I thought, and he goes, you know, he plays F all over the place there. I said, yeah, he plays it here. Well, he plays, let, let me think about this. We're going to count how many times he plays it, right? So it's like, uh, I'm going to actually play the solo here. Um, so Jimmy's right. So it's like, um, uh, uh, let's see here. So I'm going to turn this on. 
My loopback, Aaron, is uh, is going to make it phasey. Hold on, properties. Loopback audio, okay. Um, I'm playing the solo here. I'm going to mute the mic for a second. Here we go. Okay, so the mic and the loopback are kind of screwed up here. I'm just do this here. I'm going to mute the loop back and we'll just play it through this mic here. Right here, check this out. Okay, that's the first time, end of the first phrase, right? And then why is he playing that note there? Well, the chord progression is A minor, G to F major. And on the F major chord, Perfectly logical that he would play that, right? And then the next phrase, right here, he goes, again, on the F major chord, he plays the F. So the rest of the solo is using A minor pentatonic scale or blue scale, right? But Jimmy's ear tells him to play that note there every time. Now, this is really unusual because people didn't really do that in rock back then. That was that was kind of a, a um, it's almost something that a, was something that a jazz player would do, right? That they would hear the changes. And we, we would call that making the changes. But so this time, so it does there. That's the second time. Then he goes to the next phrase. So that no, nothing there, and then and he does that open G string there, which is really phenomenal. So there he plays F again. That's time number three. Listen. Okay. Um, and then he plays it again here. Uh which is amazing. Why does he play it there? It's so good. Listen to this there. Listen. Somebody put it in the comments there. Jimmy plays with the jazz mentality. He really does. He really does. He, but there he's like... He plays that on that A minor chord this time. This is the only time. Um, so how many times is that, Tom? So is that the fourth time, I think? Because he goes, uh, one, uh, uh, two, uh, th three, and then four to fourth time. Then here. So that's the fifth time he plays that note. So why does he play? Let's see what he plays there. Hold on. Yeah. Brilliant. Again on the F major chord, but the one time he plays it on the A minor chord. That's the only other time he plays it in the whole solo. You know, because then he goes into that repeat a lick. Then that, then he does that the descending pentatonic. Then he plays the probably the coolest lick in the solo. This. Uh, I finger it like this. I, he's probably playing it like this. That's an amazing. That's an amazing lick. That lick right here. Listen. Right here. Oh, woo! That's smoked. Um, okay, so five times he plays that note F. Now the cool thing I like is on the A minor. Nobody really at that time did that. And honestly, 
you know, if you think about how many times people play over A minor, uh, A minor, G, F, that's like a million songs all along the watch chart. Millions of songs. The only other person that does that is Peter Frampton, which is why when I did that, um, when I did the remaking of the, of the Stairway to Heaven solo, why I picked Frampton, because Frampton is the only other guy that used those notes, that flat six. I love that... I love adding that note to that A minor scale though, right? So I, I add that note, that's a hexatonic scale, A minor hexatonic, but with a flat six. One, flat three, four, five, flat six. But the cool thing about it is that Jimmy never plays it like that in the solo. He only plays, he only uses it in a very deliberate manner as if he's changing scales, right? Because he doesn't ever play a run. He never plays a run like that. He plays. So he's thinking. He's hearing that note, that flat six, that sad note over the chord changes, right? So if you think about this, um, this kind of a chord progression, one of the most common chord progressions in rock. So you know that Stairway to Heaven is in A minor, right? It starts, starts in A minor. Okay, it's definitely in A minor. So you would call this progression one minor, flat seven major, right? That's a flat seven to flat six major. Okay, that is probably the most common, that's the most common chord progression in rock music in minor keys, okay? So, um, but yet that particular note choice is the least common note choice in minor keys uh, for um, for soloing, okay? But it's in like the most famous solo of all time, pretty much. I mean, between that and Comfortably Numb, using that uh, particular... Um, uh, Using that particular note there um, is, I think it's really amazing that Paige uses that note so many different times. Somebody's saying, Rick, he doesn't play it there. What are you talking about? Were you in the studio? <laughs> What really what you should be able to do is you should be able to play these things anywhere, right? Is uh, all these licks. That add nine. Uh, so I'm using that F add nine there. That actually sounds cool there, going from A minor. Oh, I like that. A minor arpeggio. To, to F add nine arpeggio. Wow, somebody's saying Final Fantasy lick. That's beautiful. And then I'm playing all the arpeggios. A minor, G major, F major. I love that. Beautiful, beautiful notes. If you play just the arpeggios over those chords. I put a little E7 in there, which is cool. Um, so 
so understanding what the chords are when you're playing them, it's interesting because Dylan, when he's playing over the solo, he just knows the note. He just learns the notes of the solo. He's not thinking about the theory. He's not thinking, oh, Jimmy Page um, is playing that note. Why is he playing that note? Dylan just knows that that note is F there, right? And he's like, oh, he's he's playing F there. I li- I listened to it. Or he, or he said, listen to it. He said that to me. He goes, uh, and so I was, I listened to it and, uh, and he goes, I was like, oh my God, it is F, right? And Dylan, of course, he's got the ear. Um, so, uh, so for this particular song, it's like, why do I keep coming back to this? How can I keep discovering new things in this? Well, it's really because when when you actually are playing it with people in the same room, and uh, and then you're thinking about not only the guitar parts but what the bass is doing because Lennon's playing the bass and I'm telling her that, and then Layla's playing the drums and you realize I mean we covered this when I did my Stairway to Heaven backing track here, which is right here. <laughs> The drum part in this, Bonham's drum part is so amazing. That's my backing track that we did the recreation of, right? And my buddy Jack played all the drums in that. And it's um, it's a really complex drum part. And um, I was talking to Marcus, who's Layla's drum teacher, about this yesterday, about how unusual the fills are during the Stairway to Heaven solo. It's really unlike anything else. So there are so many things about this song that are unusual. And the fact that I'm able to discover these things 55 years later, no, no, what what is it, 53 years later, 1971, 53 years later, is really a testament to the song that there are these these, um, little unique elements that um, if... If they weren't in there, if he didn't play those notes, he very easily could have played, you know. Oh, of course, it sounds so wrong when you hear it, right? Um, that goes by pretty fast. You don't notice it. Um could have played that it would have been okay would it be the iconic solo that it is i don't know because we really can't uh you can't really put yourself you can't go back in time and rehear these things for the first time if i played that solo with those notes in it i mean i can i can play those notes we'll hear what sounds like oh Did you hear that right there? I did. It kind of loses something, right? It's kinda, it's funny that I actually can play with the backing track there and you can hear those notes are um are different. I'm going to play that again. Listen, listen for listen for that for me not playing the F note, right? Listen. Okay. Wrong. Not bad. Boring. Oh, terror. Those are so bad. Takes out the soul, Christopher said. Jimmy Page is on here. Sorry I got here late. Um... Wouldn't that be hilarious if that was actually Jimmy Page? Um, It takes out the soul. It really does. Think about this. Somebody's like, one note, uh, Matt W. says, one note is torture. It really does take the soul out of it, right? One note. 
Well, actually, it's five notes, but that those notes, a couple of them are, are passable. This one, um, no, that takes a solo out. That's That takes a soul out of it. I think the only one that this, uh, no, that, I don't think any of those really work. This one too. I think this. What the, the thing about that is that that makes it so sad is when you hear that. Because you're hearing this. I just love that. Just love that F note. I I love that F note in there, that flat six. That just kills me. That that to me is the is the that's the the uh that's the saddest of all notes. I mean, come on. Spinal Tap had that right. It's really that flat six. Uh, let's see. You're grateful for every soul around the earth. Papa Rick, lots of appreciation. Thank you, Papa Rick. I like that. Um, so um, I need to interview Jimmy Page. Music Rock says, Jimmy, if you're out there, I will come to London on one day's notice I'm just going to say it. I'm put it out there on the internet here is 3000 people watching. I will come to London tomorrow with a camera. Tom and I'll go, right Tom? Oh yeah. Tom and I'll get on a plane, go there with with a camera bag and we will interview Jimmy. I mean that would be the I could pretty much just about call it quits after that. Really, you know, I'm trying to think like what Paul McCartney, Jimmy, you know, uh, David Gilmore. I mean, there's a bunch of people I want to interview, but but could I could I call it quits after that? I don't know. Um, so uh, let's get back to the theory of this, though. First of all, how do you know what chords they are and why why am I saying these things like this term flat six? Okay, so so the theory of this, if you take a minor scale. So um I, I want to talk about this just for a brief second here. So in my theory book, my Beato book interactive, it's a it's a video course, okay? I go through all the scales. I talk about the, the major scale and all the modes, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. And then I talk about the modes of the um, different minor scales, melodic minor, harmonic minor, har uh, harmonic major, and the double harmonic major scales. But the minor scale or the natural minor or Aeolian, they're the same scale. And the notes are, if you compare them to a major scale, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, that's that note F, flat seven, one. So that's when I'm saying those notes, when I say the minor one chord to the flat seven major, this note is a flat seven, right? If I go one, two, three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and this note is the flat six. One, two, three, four, five, flat six. Okay, that's why I call those notes that. All this stuff is explained in my theory course. Well, not only is it explained in my theory course, it's explained in my ear training course too. You get all of them for 99 bucks. Go to my website, rickbeata.com. You can get them. And it will explain the theory, not only what the theory is behind it, but how to hear the stuff, how to pick those notes out like that. Like when you're hearing it, when you're going like, that's not just A minor pentatonic. I hear the, that note F is in there. But then you're like, well, why is that note in there? Because this is kind of where my brain always went to. Even when I was a kid, it's like, why do, does it go there? Why did Jimmy Page choose to do that? 
it just I can't help these things to to think about the the reasons for them. It's like why do you do something? What why there's a real intentional thing that he did there about this, but why did he choose those notes? And and in retrospect here because I have the backing track of it, I can hear what it would sound like if I didn't play those those Fs and I played the E natural and kept it all uh, in A minor pentatonic, which it easily could have been. Would Stairway to Heaven be the Stairway to Heaven that, that we think it is still? No, I don't think so. Now you can say, well, come on, Rick, there's six minutes of the song before that. Yes, and those six minutes are amazing. But the solo from here on... From there on is just like another song, right? You go to that fanfare part. I mean, these are the things I want to ask Jimmy. How do you come up with that? Like, why did you do that? Were you guys sitting in the room? Was John Bonham reading the paper as you were playing? Were you playing it as a live track? Did you? Was the ending different? You know, uh, was he just sitting there waiting to come in? Like, was he clicking his sticks together? Bum, 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 right? What was going on, well, during the, the go-down of the song? Uh, Beto Perez says, don't quit yet, Rick. Get Neil shown here. Oh, I told, I, I'm going to have Neil on for sure. I love Neil. When, when I did this lick, uh, that, that's a total Neil. Uh, Neil, Lukather, both of them guys. Luke and Neil both will do that. Will do that lick. Uh, uh, Neil, uh, Luke does that. That's. It. I just love that having that sixth, that flat six, and the um, and the fifth next to each other like that. I think is. I just think it's beautiful together. I just, those two notes just give it that uh, real melancholy feel, right? Um, so I'm going to keep coming back to these things. There's, there's, there's um, a good friend of mine was telling me that he's a preacher. And he said, Rick, you should revisit some of the themes of some of your earlier videos because there's other things that you can bring out. You can tell the same story, but have a different, uh, pull out different meanings from it. And I thought, interesting. Because I've talked about Stairway to Heaven so many times. I've talked about the solo. But this particular thing, it's like, why why, why does Jimmy Page play that note? And, and these are things that I can't answer. And maybe Jimmy can't answer it. But it's... Um, but these are the things that when I interview people that I can ask them about. And that's why, that's the whole beauty of this. You know, when I asked Andy Summers about walking, walking on the moon and Roxanne and every breath you take and all these things like, why, 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 why? And it's fascinating because people really don't ask them these questions. And typically when people do interviews, they don't have their, get their instrument in their hands, right? That's the whole beauty of YouTube. And by the way, um, I never tell people this in my live streams because it never occurs to me, but hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm close to 4 million. I'd love to get there. Uh, and you think like it doesn't make a difference. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's a vanity metric and everything. Well, it's a vanity metric that I want to reach. Okay. Uh, so... Definitely will happen this year, but I'm getting close. I'm I'm um I'm about a hundred and um I don't know probably one hundred and thirty thousand. I'm a couple months away from you know a couple good months, and I could be there. Um. So that's it. So if that's Jimmy Page on there, Jimmy, I'll I'll be there. Just write to me. Let me know anyway. Have your have your manager write to me. Whoever. I'll I'll be over there tomorrow. I'll, I'll drop everything, and uh, and and come there and uh, and and have a chat. That would be amazing. Anyhow, you guys are the best. 
Enjoy the rest of your um, rest of your week, your weekend. Uh, I um, this has been a great start to 2024. Had some really big videos already, so it's fantastic. Uh, that's it, everybody. Have a great, great weekend. We'll see you later. Take care.